your biggest accomplishment? I probably shouldn't say this. Like, of course, immediately what I want to say is my kids, right? I'm so incredibly impressed by who these human beings are. And so if I can take a little bit of credit for the nature and a little bit of credit for the nurture, then I would say that. But, you know, it's really cheating because um, I can't take credit for them. In that sense, it's probably three co's. It's building this business that I'm so proud of. And it, it I think, helps lots of people. It, it gives us an amazing life. And yeah, I'm very proud of that accomplishment. What one question would you want to ask your future self in five years? Jeez, these are like lightning round, except they're like profound, deep questions. <laughs> um, I've had a few friends pass away in the last five years at sort of 50 and less than 50. So I've adopted this philosophy of what would I prioritize if I knew I was only going to live for another year? But then my mom is 88. <laughs> and so I say, what, you know, what would I prioritize if I was going to live another 50 years? And so I guess five years from now, I'd want to, to ask, are you getting that right? Uh, like, mm -hmm. are you living life with the right balance of you might be here for another day only, and you might be here for another 50 years? The one surprising thing you've learned about running your own business. Oh yeah. Like it's just, it's not stressful. Um, it, it just, and, and when you're working on a Saturday and, uh, and other people aren't, um, you know, I thought that it might, I might feel resentment. I might feel overworked. And really what I feel is that I'm working today because I choose to work today. I'm working on the things I'm dreaming of. I'm working on the things I care about. And you know, if I weren't, I, I don't need to be working today. So, um, it's, it's just, it's a joy. It feels amazing to uh, build something that, that is mine and, and maybe will outlast me. Who knows? What drains you? I guess, you know, people who don't take accountability for their own situation in life, you, you know, somebody who struggles with something, ah, uh, they give me huge energy. I love somebody who's struggling and I can, you know, be with them, sit with them, help them, whatever. But people who just like wait for everybody else to make the world better for them, they drain me. And and sometimes I have to be around them, but I do find afterward that that is exhausting. So that and uh, like long Zoom meetings. <laughs> Your biggest failure. Well, of course, now I point to all of my big failures as the inflection points in my life, right? So that failing calculus, which was mortifying. Like I had been a pretty strong student and then all of a sudden here I was in university and I failed. Like I didn't just like get a not great mark. No, I failed the course. Um, and so it, that was a massive failure and a massive moment of reckoning about who I am. The interesting thing was that I decided I was gonna march back in there and take that exact same course the next year. And so that moment of failure turned into when I got a 75 the next year, that was, it, although it was definitely not the best mark I ever got, it was the mark I was most proud of because it didn't defeat me. Uh, you know, one of the things I would also include in that category of a big failure is I really messed up badly in an organizational conflict um, in my career. And I wasn't the person who I, wished that I was and I and I lost a friendship out of it and it was really ugly and another case where you know years later repaired the friendship um you know so and, and ended up focusing my work on this conflict issue because I had experienced it failed at it miserably myself so yeah I have a lot of examples of where um, my biggest failures were actually those key inflection points in my life the best advice you ever received Oh, my, my mentor, Terry says, you can have it all. You just can't have it all on Tuesday. <laughs> I just, I just love that because, you know, she was a woman one generation ahead of me and she was another trailblazer and didn't let anybody tell her she couldn't be an executive and a mom and now a grandma and all those and be great at all those things. Um, she just said, don't make the mistake of thinking that you can do it all at once and, and don't 
look at work-life balance on a given day. It's never gonna be balanced on a given day, but you can have phases of your life and eras of your life and, and overall you can have it all. And I really feel like I have it all. There is nothing. Well, the only thing would be, I'd love to be able to sing in a choir again someday, but that's the only thing I could even think of that, that I don't have that would make my life a little bit better. One book or movie that has influenced you the most? Uh, my favorite book goes back to this curiosity theme and it's called Fermat's Enigma. And it is the most fascinating book by Simon Singh. And it looks at like 400 years of the epic quest to solve Fermat's last theorem. And it is a wild tromp. I know a book about a mathematical theorem does not sound like it could be the best beach read ever, but it absolutely is. And it's just my favorite kind of book where each chapter takes you on a completely different path to understand how this, uh, how this very long story all played out. And, uh, and that book just reminded me that, you know, you can be fascinated by many things. You can add value by integrating and synthesizing things, which is what I'm good at. And so mm. that book was, which I read in university was like a real inspiration to keep going. A behavior or habit that you think may be holding you back? Um, so of course, curiosity has an overstrength as well, right? Which is just like, I'm so interested in everything that it, it's easy to get diluted and diffuse. Um, so just, you know, making sure that I go like squirrel and then I'm like, <laughs> no, focus. <laughs> so that's, that's an important thing. I'm getting much, much better at focusing now, but for a long time, I just would like try new things. And like, buy, I'm a very creative type. So I'd like buy all the gear for candle making and make two candles and then have, I have a lot of closets full of craft gear. Uh, very last question, Leanne. If you could only share one message with the world before you left, what would that message be? Yeah, definitely some things are worth fighting for. Beautiful.